I hope you have your aluminum wine glasses ready. Hopefully not to throw it at anybody, but we are going to get into all of the Love is Blind tea today. Get ready for it. Let's dive in. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TV tea, serve fresh all week long. Now, let's dive in. Okay, so today I've got on one of the uh, more notorious cast members from the recent season of Love is Blind. You know him as the bad boy who's always rocking the Hawaiian shirts from season six of Love is Blind. It's Mr. Steal Your Girl, Jeremy Latinsky. Welcome on in. What an introduction, man. That was, uh, that was impressive. You? I'm sorry to disappoint with not having the, the, the Hawaiian on today, though. I, well, you still have the baseball cap, which we appreciate. Yeah, still got the cap. <laughs> how you doing i'm doing good i uh just working today enjoying a little bit of nice weather for a change and just just trying to keep it easy today how you doing i'm great um how has life been since one uh love is blind started airing and two now that it's kind of wrapped has have things died down a little bit yeah so uh i mean they we're the, the Love is Blind team tries to prepare us as much as possible in advance for like, hey, I don't think you understand how much of a roller coaster it's going to be because you're going to go from non-existent to in the public eye overnight. And as much preparation as they try to give us, there is no way to prepare for it. But, uh, you know, things over the last two weeks or so have finally died down a little bit. And I feel like I can, I can like breathe at this point. So it's it's getting better. We're getting there. Yeah. Do you have any of the other pod girls slid into your DMs aside from Sarah Ann? No, no, yeah. I, I have not spoken to other than maybe a random passing conversation. I have not spoken to any of the girls since, I mean, a year ago at this point. When the show actually aired, did you see some of the other contestants and be like, damn, I wish I would have pursued that one? No, to be honest, I was I mean, I've, I've been happy with where I'm at with Sarah. So you weren't it, you weren't like, oh my god, there's a Megan Fox look like. How did I let that one slip away? So no, but the, the Megan Fox thing is it, it was really funny. And you know what? I'll, I'll give it to her. If if you go from here up, I I do see the resemblance. So it yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so how familiar were you with Love is Blind prior to joining the show? I had never sat down and watched an entire episode. Um, I, I had seen it in passing. I knew little bits and pieces of it and I knew kind of the concept of it. I didn't know anything about reunions. I didn't know anything about like, I, I was about as naive walking into it as you probably could be. And I, I also walked into it knowing that I hadn't seen it and was going on it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep it that way just so I can not know what to expect and try to have it be as authentic as possible at that point. Um, I don't know if that really helped or hurt me in that in, in that stance looking back on it now, but I, I almost knew nothing about it. So what did you come on the show looking for necessarily? Because obviously the intention is to find a partner and get married to them in the end. Did you actually yeah. think that you would get married in the end of this? Yeah. So I, I was definitely open to the idea of it. You know, I'm not going to say I walked in there like I'm not leaving unless I find or, I you know, I wasn't so set on finding somebody that I was like, just that was my end all be all. But I walked into it with an open mind of like, you know, if it happens, great. If not, also, that's fine. Why not try it? It's a unique experience. But uh, I was totally open to the idea of walking away, you know, married in that experience. Yeah, well, we did see Trevor. He kind of seemed to have come in with an agenda, um, was talking to somebody as he was coming into the show. Mm -hmm you genuinely were coming in looking for a relationship or at least open to it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I'm not going to say I went in there with like, I have to leave here married, but if I yeah. found the right person and if I, you know, was able to connect with somebody on a different level other than like, you know, visually at first, I was totally yeah. open to it. Now you were recently engaged though, or at least recent compared to when you joined the show. How long after, can you break down that timeline? How long after you broke up with, your ex, did you mm -hmm. then apply for the show? Yeah. So she and I had split, split. It was on the rocks for a while. And then we ended up finalizing the split around October. I, I did move into my own place around November. 
And then about, I think it was around a week or two after I'd actually moved out, was doing my own thing. I actually got reached out to over Instagram by a casting director. And at that point I was single and was like, it's, this isn't going to happen. If they want to talk, let's at least have the conversation and, you know, have that conversation in November and then come February, which is months later, they're like, Hey, you're in. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't think this was actually going to be a thing, but okay, let, let's do it. So was that a concern for you at all? Knowing that like you had just gotten out of a relationship. Normally the person you date after the relationship is the rebound. So do you feel yeah. like you were ready to kind of jump into something serious? Yeah. And, and you know, that's, it's actually, that's a really good question. Um, at the time in my, in, in my mind, I was absolutely 100% ready for that. Now that there has been time that's passed and I've had way more time to think about that, you know, in, in the real world, you know, I, I can't say I wasn't ready to move on, but I think I probably should have taken more time to myself before getting into that. And again, when, when I was reached out to, I thought to myself like, Hey, why not go through with the application process? There's a 0% chance of this happening. And then once it all came to fruition, I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is about to be an interesting experience. How long did you guys date before you broke things off? Uh, I think a little over two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it, it wasn't short, you know, there was definitely some ups and downs throughout that, that whole experience there, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like a short, short term relationship. So then coming into the pods, obviously we see everyone's journey, getting to know each other. And then in the end, you end up picking Laura. Why mm -hmm. did you pick Laura? Like, what was it about Laura that made you choose her over Sarah Ann? Okay, so there's two things. Um, one, talk talking with Laura and Sarah, you know, I had good connections with both of them. Unfortunately, with Sarah, a lot of that wasn't shown. Um, it showed a little bit more of Laura and I, and there really wasn't even that much of that shown either, to be honest. But um, Sarah was someone that I knew that if I met in the real world, it, just by the conversations we were having and like the banter that we had, she was always like, kind of, we'll call it my type, even though I couldn't see her, that that type of energy was a little bit more my type. Laura, not that she had like, you know, any worse energy or anything like that. She was just a little more, you know, we're talking way more about finances. We're talking about, you know, houses. We're talking about things like that versus just all the fun stuff. Yeah. So I, I went in there like, okay, I've got to make a decision. I'm going to go with the decision that might be a little bit more uncomfortable for me, but I'm also here trying to grow and do something different that I haven't done before. So going for Laura was stepping out of your comfort zone, trying something yes. new. Yeah. I mean, it also sounds like from the conversations that it seems like you guys were having, you were also looking at it from a compatibility standpoint of like, oh, it looks like maybe we're in alignment with a lot of things. Yeah. And, and again, it's not shown, but there was a lot of things that, that Sarah and I did that, that we were compatible on. I'm not going to say we're compatible on every single thing. There's some stuff that I, I might not necessarily agree with in some senses, but um, yeah, I had, I had really good compatibility with both of them. And uh, you know, there, there was some other reasons as to why I went with Laura at that time, but ultimately it was um, just stepping out of my comfort zone. Do you think that you and Sarah Ann would have actually gone the distance had you chosen her and gone through the Netflix experience with Sarah versus Laura? I would like to think so because, yeah. I mean, obviously we've been together for a year at this point. Uh, a lot's happened, but I, I don't know. Because one thing that I didn't expect is that the relationship side of things is one piece of it, but there's a whole other added pressure when you're when you're going through the production process, when you're going through you know having cameras on you 24/7. Then you're back in your real life, you know, filming after work and things like that. It added a whole lot of extra stress that I think caused more problems than maybe it would have been in a normal relationship. So I I want to think we would, but I, I also don't know because we're. Yeah. It's tough. It's a tough one. So I guess the biggest question everybody wants to know is what were you guys actually talking about until 5 a.m.? You know, like there, there's no way you were just talking about finances with Sarah in the car at the parking lot. Yeah, no. It, it, honestly, it's it's not as exciting as everybody wants it to be. Um, and it's it's kind of, I don't want to say it's worn out at this point, but everybody's tired of kind of hearing my answer on this. But okay. 
we unintentionally meet. Mm-hmm. We do at first talk about, you know, this is, there was other cast members here when this part happened. So yeah. we did talk about us a little bit, you know, like, Hey, here's what happened with the pods. Here's this. I let her express herself. It wasn't really a friendly conversation at first. I thought she was going to like swing on me at some point because she came in hot in the beginning of that conversation. So I'm just standing in the corner, like, okay, th- let's, let's just deal with this at this point. And then it calmed down. So getting closer towards the end of the night, you know, the bar closing, all that stuff. She's like, Hey, are you ready for this lake day? I knew that something was coming up. I wasn't completely filled in on what exactly was coming up. So I find out that we're about to be filming for this lake day and they were going to have, she and I set up to where this was the first time with us meeting in person. Mm. Laura and I had already been having some trouble. Sarah had already been a part of the conversation a few times And I was kind of so done with the filming portion of things that I was like, no, I'm not about to have that put out. We're going to have this conversation. We're going to squash things and we're going to try to figure out a better way to, you know, present ourselves to where we're not just sitting here arguing on camera. Laura's not arguing on camera with everything. And we we sat down, we we sat there just trying to sort that out. And yeah, it ended up running late. And I knew I was going to catch a bunch of hell for it. And I I even told Sarah that. But... uh, I expected to walk back, and this was dumb on my part. I expected to be able to walk back to Laura and be like, hey, here's what happened. Here's the conversation that was had. We're done. We can move past it. Yeah. Obviously, that's not what happened. So we didn't cheat. And I've heard the emotional cheating piece. I've heard, like, it didn't have to be physical. I get it. It's just not that exciting. Was there any flirtation? I mean, obviously, there had to have been, you guys connected in the pods. You guys are together now. There had to have been some sort of spark. There had to have been something there's chemistry there yeah and 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 i'm not gonna say that you know i mean we we, it's not like we're sitting around like holding hands kissing hug and anything like that but yeah there was definitely i think we could both sense that there was still some attraction that was going on there but we both understood where we were at at that point like i am with someone you know you and i broke up at one point but First and foremost, we're not about to put this out all out on air and, you know, have it turn into a complete dumpster fire. Little did we know it's exactly what would happen. <laughs> would, what would you have done if she invited you in that night? I still wouldn't have done it. The only reason the only reason I went back to her place, because I was only I was there for a few minutes. I've heard I was there all night. That's not what happened. Yeah. By the time things wrapped up, like I'm not going to just leave the girl in the parking lot. She lives like six minutes away from the place. So I just dropped yeah. it off. It, that's that's all that happened. Have you ever cheated in a relationship? I'm not going to say I've always been perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I, I won't sit there and lie about that. So are we getting a, an evolved Jeremy? Have we, we matured a little bit? I would like to say yes. I mean, in the last year, again, there's been a lot that's happened. There's a lot of time to process some of the things that have gone on, able to think yeah. about things. Um, I mean, I've actively been going to therapy myself. I've been really stepping out of my comfort zone on a lot of things. And uh, I know it might not seem like I I care all that much just based off of some of my responses, maybe to things that have come out. But I I just try to sit back and not let too many things bother me because I know I'm working on myself. I know I'm doing my own thing. And that's all I can do at this point. Now, we did see um, on the lake, Sarah Ann told AD that you said to her that you were planning to break things off with Laura that night. Mm -hmm. Do you want to clarify what you said? Yeah, that didn't happen that night. So that was because when I, when I saw that on, like I'm watching it, you know, as it's coming out, just like everybody else is. And when I saw that clip, I looked over at Sarah, I'm like, what did you, why did you say that? So where they, where that got confused at is Laura and I, you know, we get into that infamous argument after I stayed out as late as I did. And so we hadn't really been talking all that much. Or the, the production team asked us, hey, or tells us basically, hey, you need to go to a dinner. We're going to film this. And we try to work some things out there. And that's also where I was given the idea to like send her flowers and stuff. I know I got a ton of heat over that. You know, oh, you just went through a, a breakup and an engagement. Why are you sending flowers? That doesn't make sense. That's where that came from. And then uh, things continued to deteriorate after that dinner to a point where like the lake day's coming up. Laura and I are not speaking still at this point. We're, we're actually broken up in real life at this point. Yeah. Sarah is not talking to any of the women. I'm not really talking to a lot of the guys from the show because they're out filming. They're out doing their own stuff. And 
I, I'm under an NDA at this point, so I can't just go out and talk to like friends and family about everything that's going on. So then that leads me and Sarah to kind of start leaning on each other to start talking about things. Laura and I are broken up in real life. Sarah and I start kind of like we, we're starting to talk at this point. Then the lake day comes up. And in between Laura and I breaking up and going to the lake, that's where Sarah and I had started talking about a relationship. Okay. So, but the, the scene with you and Laura it, in the, the morning after scene, we see that you're saying that there was a dinner that was, that happened after that before the yes. lake. Yep. Okay. So yeah, how it, long it didn't ago? Make it into the edit, but it, it, it happened. Okay. So, because she also, I think at the lake says that she hasn't heard from you in three days. So it makes it seem like it was only a three day period from when she saw you the night after you were with Sarah and the lake. No, th so that three day comment comes from when we had actually filmed the that, that that dinner scene. Got it. That makes more sense. Yeah. So then, how long was it actually? Like, how long was the the distance from when you between uh, Sarah and the lake day? Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I'm gonna say it's it was probably about a week. Probably about a week, okay. week and a half. Um. I, so I don't that, know the exact timeline on that. That's the week that you and Sarah kind of ended up really, you know, getting yeah. to know each other a lot better. Yeah. So going into the lake at that point where you're like, okay, my relationship with, with Laura is done at this point. Like there's no coming back from it. No, we, we, we were broken up in real life at that point. Like that it was, that was done and over with. And we, we basically had to film it, which, you know, that it was pretty tense at that point. Um, so it, it, it was an uncomfortable conversation, but yeah, things, things were already well and done at that point. And so Laura claims that you were a pod robot and, you know, she says that she wanted an apology from you at the reunion. Um, do you have anything you want to say to her now, now that the dust has kind of settled now that, you know, it's been a, a few weeks since the reunion. Um, yeah. do you regret any of it? So, the, I'll start with the pod robot like phrase. I I don't agree with that because the things that I was getting heat from her about, like, yeah, everybody jokes about the Hawaiian shirts, and and that even for me that was a little bit overblown. Like I told you in the pods, hey, I wear Hawaiian shirts. I'm super clean. I'm you know X Y Z things, and like as soon as I get out of the pods, I'm getting hate for the Hawaiian shirt from her. You know, she comes to my house, takes a tour of the place, and the and like. I, I'm as clean as I describe myself being, and then I'm being told, hey, this gives off serial killer vibes. So it's like, I, I told you everything that I was, that I was, and I was still getting a ton of like hate from her on that. And I'm like, all right, yeah. whatever. But as far as, as far as the, you know, the, the apology goes, I have a hard time believing that she was invested as she claims to be. Mm. However, if she really was that invested, and if if I did hurt her feelings through all of this experience, I do apologize for that. And, you know, if she ever sees it or watches it, Laura, I apologize to you about that. I've, I've tried apologizing every different which way, and it always seems to be the wrong way, apparently. But I, I do actually apologize for that. Do I think things could have been different? Sure. Looking back on it, you know, the timeline of things could have definitely been different. But in that in that specific scenario, it's it's a weird isolated bubble that you're in. Yeah. And you're just trying to figure it out as you're going. So I don't know how different things could have been. You know, it's, it's kind of hypothetical at that point. Well, it was also interesting because we saw when you guys met the parents, even her mom was kind of like, you guys always take jabs at each other. You know, like the mom seemed to have a little bit of concern about your banter as maybe it was a little bit more than just playful. Yeah. And I mean, I definitely had feelings throughout our relationship that it, things just weren't completely right. Um, I mean, we would get into these weird little tiffs just over like communication styles on things. I'm definitely way more like laid back, try to be, you know, pretty easygoing about a lot of things. And I don't think she and I just, we just didn't mesh on that, which is fine, you know, whatever. But uh, I mean, there was even times pretty early on to where, you know, we're supposed to be staying in this townhouse together and we're supposed to be, you know, working on our routines together. And there'd be nights where she would like go back to her own apartment claiming that she has, you know, she wants to work from there that night or the next morning or whatever else. And things like that really did bug me because in my mind, I was invested in that experience. And I, and we only have like two or three weeks to figure out if we're going to get married and every day counts at that point. Yeah. So we just, we just weren't seeing eye to eye on a lot of things.
So explain the condo situation. So did you guys live in the same city? Because it sounds like you guys were all pretty close. If you're going out to a bar and Sarah Ann lives six minutes away, but there's a condo that you and Laura are staying at, but you're each able to go back to your apartments. Are you guys yeah. all in the same area? Yeah. So we're all from the surrounding Charlotte area. You, I think the rule was you had to live within like a 30 minute radius, basically. Uh, so you sense. didn't have to be from Charlotte proper, but you had to be from around the area. Um, so Laura lived, um, just out, she lived somewhere down towards South End, which is a little bit South of Uptown. We, it's not downtown. We call it Uptown here. Um, and I lived to the West of Charlotte. Sarah Ann lived like just outside of Uptown and the townhouse we ended up staying at was like directly South of Charlotte. Um, so Laura was able to grab some of her stuff. I grabbed my stuff. We moved down basically South of Charlotte. And I think that was like maybe 10 or 15 minutes directly outside the city. So it was all pretty close. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's also kind of messy that they want all of you guys in the same sort of area because then you're bound to run into each other and then you're all bound to, you know, not be within proximity so that other things can come up. Yeah. Um, do you feel like in watching back your scenes this morning, because I was looking back at your scenes with Laura um, and watching them back, I kind of feel like you were trying to communicate with her. I know you were painted as the villain. But I didn't, mm -hmm. in re-watching the show, I don't know if I'd left with that same impression. Because, I, I mean, obviously, you it, the impression is that you mess with Laura's feelings and then ended mm -hmm. up you know, cheating on her with another girl in the pods and then ended up leaving her for Sarah. Yeah. But I feel like you things weren't working out with you and Laura. Mm -hmm. Communication didn't seem to be very strong. It felt like Laura was very... I don't want to say controlling, but she was very specific about how she liked things done. She was very specific about her communication, which was very direct and sometimes a bit abrasive. And I feel yeah. like your communication was a little more passive. And, you know, it just seemed like you were trying to maybe she didn't believe that nothing happened, which I think a lot of people still have a lot of questions about whether or not something actually happened. But you and Sarah have been yeah. very clear that nothing happened. Um, and it just seemed like she... I don't know her communicate. I just, I didn't see the compatibility in the end between you and Laura. Yeah. I mean, and, and I definitely felt that while, while we were filming and as I'm watching it back, like everybody else is, I think I saw the severity of it. And I'm like, I just, I finally sat down and was like, man, this girl just didn't like me. And yeah. and that's fine. That's kind of the part of the experiment. I don't knock her for that. Um, it, it, it was, it was tough, but even, even some things I've learned about myself kind of watching it back, you know, and it doesn't show in the show in my normal, like everyday life, I'm a lot more mellow. I'm, yeah. I, I kind of just easy going, try to mind my own business. And I mean, even going like this, the, the Dominican stuff, like I'm watching myself and I'm just over the top in so many things. And finally, yeah. what I got to, you know, digging into it more is I think that I was trying to get some sort of reaction out of her because yeah. I, I knew something was lacking somewhere. So I was just trying to do something to try to draw something out. And I think that could have been a little bit of insecurity. It could have been a little bit of just, I don't know, trying to figure out the situation because it was weird, but yeah. I don't think she was that into as she claims that she was. I think looking at her and even identifying some traits within myself and, and, and her personality, uh, she's very type A. And mm -hmm. I think she was more committed to not failing at the experiment now that she found somebody and now that we were going to the altar. And I feel like that was yeah. more of her objective rather than truly having feelings for you and wanting to marry you. I think it was more of like, he's not going to leave me for somebody else. And we committed to this engagement. We're going to go through with this. Like it was more about making sure she hit all of the benchmark metrics rather mm -hmm. than it was that she was genuinely into you and wanting to marry you. Um, you, I could not have said that any better myself. Like you, you hit that nail right on the head. And yeah. when, when I realized, so I kind of always felt that way, but yeah. when I watched it back and I, and I see the interaction, th this is when it really tipped it over for me. When I see the interaction between Laura and Sarah Ann, where, you know, Sarah Ann and I just broke up and, you know, Laura, Laura's just saying like, oh, you're a bad bitch. You're this and that I'm watching like her facial expressions the whole time. And I'm like, it looks like she just wanted to win. Like yeah. even from that point on, and then it's like we hit the real world and it just accelerated from there. Yeah. I, I don't have any ill will towards her. I don't have any really any bad feelings towards her. 
it was just a bad experience. Um, I, I think on both of our parts. Yeah. Mallory in the live chat wants to know if you did in fact go and kick rocks with open toed shoes. I did. I did not. I did not kick rocks with open toed shoes. <laughs> no, you kicked the door open to Sarah Ann. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one way to put it. <laughs> uh, Donna says, why did you actively do things to hurt Laura? Do you feel like you were vindictively trying to hurt her? So the, I think the only thing that I was a little vindictive with at, cer at a certain point was the, the Hawaiian shirts. I got to a point where I was like, I'm so tired of hearing about it that I'm just going to start wearing them. Yeah. Oh, Michelle says the state of your house does not scream mellow. Oh, does scream, oh, you know, does not scream mellow. I don't know. I feel like your background looks pretty mellow to me. Yeah, just a tree in, a, in my chair and my, my workstation. <laughs> yeah, Nessa says the white walls. Um, They're actually cream colored. They're not white. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. Uh, Evie says Laura and him seemed so passive aggressive. I felt like like that there was this underlying tension between you guys. Like I just I don't know if I believe. Like again, in watching it back this morning, I don't know if I believe she really like liked you as a person as much as you know she was just committed to seeing this through. And I agree. And then once you were with Sarah Ann, then she became you know the perpetual. Oh my God, look at what he did to me. Because then, you know, there's the scene where she's talking to you and then she's like, you're a narcissist and she kind of just storms off. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, maybe if you want to paint him as a cheater, that's one thing because you would say he was with Sarah Ann until 5 a.m. But I was like, I don't know if I see any narcissistic traits, whereas a narcissist is just such a buzzworthy term that I think people like to throw out there to avoid um, as more of a deflection to avoid any accountability on their own end. Yeah, it's, uh, and I, I've seen it a lot online and stuff. That's, there's a lot of ar armchair diagnosing going on right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stacy says, did he ever actually have fun with Laura? She didn't seem very light and fun. No, she was very stick. Yeah. Her. I, I'm not, I, yeah, we definitely, so uh, not so much when we got back to Charlotte, but in the Dominican, there was a couple of really cool things. Um, uh, it's not shown, but they actually, we went out, we went out on a helicopter ride over the islands, got to see some like sunken ships, things like that. It was, it was pretty cool, but her, her version of fun and my version of fun are kind of two different things. How are you and Sarah Ann now? We're good. She's actually, she, I didn't know if you wanted her to poke her head in here or not. She keeps opening and closing my door. Look, look oh, if she wants to poke her head in, she's more than welcome to. Do you guys see it going like in the direction of marriage? It's been a little over a year now. We're, you know, we're still, we're going to marry Laura. Oh, she heard her name. She just popped That's back up. I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> you come, come here. Who are you talking up. to? Talking to Zach. We're, we're live, by the way. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> She's just walking in here eating. <laughs> eating a celery stick. Hi. I look crazy right now. I was just eavesdropping. <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready for him to actually propose to you now? I don't know. This guy. <laughs> We we we've, we've talked about it and we're 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 still navigating a lot of kind of just real life stuff and and it it was really hard you know going through that experience and then having to hide a relationship from the world for basically a year and yeah. not be able to talk openly or or anything like that about it so it's it we're still we're still working through a lot of things when it comes to that Amber be on you know that's always the goal but I think that um I don't know. It was a really high pressure situation. So I think that we kind of got lucky, if anything, to to be able to still maintain a relationship outside of the experiment and and see what happens from there, you know? So <laughs> I mean, I think the fact that one, that you guys have lasted, two, that you didn't end up having to go to the altar and go through that experience, I think says a lot to the the genuine connection that you guys have. Yeah. Definitely. I'll let you have him back. I'm still yeah. working, but <laughs> nice meeting you. <laughs> Sorry, I totally was eavesdropping. Huh? <laughs> like, just talking to my man now. <laughs> uh, um, Amber B says, have you ever been told that you look like Justin Harley? Justin Harley? I've, I don't know who Justin Harley is. So uh, he's, he's an actor. He was on This Is Us. He's done a bunch of different shows. Um, but it would it, it essentially be the equivalent of uh, it would be your Megan Fox. That's your story. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to look him up after this. I haven't heard that one before. I've yeah. heard a lot of Elon Musk since this has come out. So, you know, ah. that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with it. Like, hey, you want to call me, uh, you know, a billionaire lookalike? Not the worst yeah. thing in the world. Well, Jeremy, I know you do have to get going. So thank you for popping in. Thank you for chatting with us. Thank you for sitting in the hot seat. 
And listen, I wish you and Sarah Ann nothing but the best. I hope Laura can find her, you know, 90 day fiance somewhere abroad and, and, and live her best life. Absolutely. Hey, I, I hope the best for everybody. Yes. All right. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Awesome. I appreciate you having me on. Bye. All right, guys. What do we think? Are we a fan of Jeremy? I actually like Jeremy. Well, one, I like red flags and I like problematic guys. But like, you know, I actually don't think he's as bad. If you rewatch this season of Netflix, of, of Netflix's Love is Blind, I actually think maybe, um, maybe there was a little bit of... Um, I don't know, some villain editing. I would I, I would actually love to see on on House of Villains. Imagine if him and Sarah Ann went on House of Villains together. Um, you said from the get-go that he was your type. Absolutely. Oh my God. You know? Absolutely. I was like, of course, of every of anyone that I'm gonna have on that, who am I gonna have? Chelsea, Chelsea, bang, bang. No, thank you. AD, AD's doing I love AD, but she's doing everybody's podcast right now. She's the favorite. I like the villains. Give me a this no filter is a house of villains. Wait till you see who else we have coming on the podcast. Um Justin Harley is a much better compliment than Elon Musk. I agree. I actually think he does kind of look like Justin. And I think that, that was great. Um, has this changed your opinion of him at all? Because I just if you go back and rewatch, oh, Kay, uh, Kaylee says she's still team Laura. I like Laura, but Laura's kind of, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit like Laura. I feel like Laura's just a little, she's a little tough. She's, like, oh, she's going to tackle you. Um, doughy white men with all the red flags. I know. Michelle, those are my favorite. Although Jeremy's a little more, well, he's, he's got, you know, dad en daddy energy. Um, I think he was still trash to Laura. Okay, what did you think that he did that was trash to Laura, though? Plain and simple, he just trust he just chose wrong. I agree, Stacy. I think he just chose wrong. Um, I don't like Laura. I mean, I don't. She wasn't my favorite. Um, I got you, Boo. He spoke on TikTok about it. Spoke on TikTok about what? Um, I don't like Laura. Anyways, I mean, I feel like people, I'm happy for him and Sarah Ann. Sarah Ann is cute. She's pretty. I thought everyone was really mean to Sarah Ann. And you know what? Let her come and steal your man. Good for her. If she can steal him, then you didn't have him to begin with. But I really don't believe that Laura was committed to Jeremy. I think she was committed to the experiment. I think she was committed to making it to the altar because that's what you're supposed to do. And I even said, if I ever do Love is Blind, I don't know if I can do it. Because I, if I'm going, I'm Laura. I'm Laura. I'm going to be a bitch. And I'm going to make sure we get all the way to the end because I'm not. you're not going to leave me at the altar. How dare you? I'm drawing knives if you think you're going to leave me at the altar. Please leave me at the altar. Do you know what a prize I'm? You think I want to be left crying like AD? No, thank you. No siree. Mm -mm. No Cerritos Auto Square. Not today. You are not going to pull a clay on me where you make me think that I'm going to be chosen and then in the end you just leave me at the altar? Hmm. Um, Jeremy addressed all the DV stuff with his ex on TikTok, but I am not so convinced. Oh, I don't know about the, the DV stuff. I know people were asking about that. Um, trust me, there were a lot of questions. We only had 30 minutes to, uh, to get into everything, but I have literally a whole other list of questions about his ex, about the mom, about, you know, his future, about things with Sarah Ann. If he would join House of Villains, I had a ton of other questions that I wanted to get to him, but we were short on time. We only had him for 30 minutes because he had a, um, he squeezed me in after his work call. He squeezed me in like, you know, I was Sarah Ann in that window before 5 a.m. Before he had to return home to Laura. Um, okay. Not after hearing his ex break it down. That girl went through it. I don't know. I have to look into it because I honestly, I don't know much about the DV stuff or much about his ex, to be honest with you. Um, I always like try to take things with a grain of salt, though, like. I know there was this one girl that came out, like everybody wants to come out on TikTok and has a story about somebody on TV right now, right? And I always like to take these things with a grain of salt. Again, I'm speaking very generally. I don't know the specifics of the DV stuff with his ex. But one example is somebody, people were sending me this video of this girl who was just on Vanderpump Rules. And she was like, oh, I was the bartender and Tom Sandoval never paid me. And there I am, you see me in the back and I never got paid to be a bartender. And she's like, I also you did work for Sandoval in the past. And like, I was like his assistant. He never paid me for that either. So in my head, I was like, well, what is your relationship with Sandoval? If you did work from him in the past and he never paid you, why would you agree to work for him again? Why would you agree to do this on camera? Because it kind of seems like there was camera exposure that you were 
looking to gain or that was offered in some form of compensation for for doing that. Um, also, because a lot of people like to come out and be like, I never got paid for this or I never got paid for that. And I'm just like, show me the invoices. Because here's the thing. People love to come out and say, I never got paid for something. But it's like, where's the invoice? Did you follow up? Did you send an email to somebody? Was it a CPA? Was it a bookkeeper? Was it to them directly? Was it a text message? Was it an email? Like, where's the paper trail that proves you were entitled to be paid to something for something? And then the invoice where you show here, because like when I have to, when I um, have a brand deal or a contract and stuff, there everything, there's always contracts. There's always um, invoices that need to be sent. There's always a tracking of um, uh, either a check or a wire transfer, like all of that stuff. You have to provide an invoice. You have to provide a W, uh, W9. So like, I, I have questions, you know, if somebody pays you, you have to give them a W9. So that at the end of the year, when you do your taxes, that gets reported, you know, like there are just things in there. So when I see somebody go on TikTok, I'm like, this person never paid me for this. I'm like, show me the invoice. Show me that, that you followed up with them on this occasion and that occasion, and they never gave you your payment. You know, don't just be like, oh, I did that. And I think I was supposed to get paid for it. So now I'm going to go on TikTok and I'm going to drag this person. You know, I always, anytime anybody has a phone and they want to get on TikTok and tell their story about something, and it's always trashing somebody else or calling somebody else out, makes me question their motives. Um, don't come out with it unless you've got receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots. Exactly, Michelle. Exactly. Um, Mimir says, I, people make mistakes, learn and grow. Hopefully. Yeah, I agree. Mimir says also, please hit the like button. Guys, if you're watching this live on YouTube, hit that like button. If you're watching this on Apple podcasts, then be sure to leave me a nice Apple podcast review. And if you're watching this on Spotify, five stars, five stars, one, two, three, four, five. Let's get it, get it, get it. Oh, um, but yeah, I was very happy to, to have Jeremy on the show. He is my favorite. He is just like, he looks so delicious so delicious but i ain't promiscuous and if you were fictitious all that shit is wait and if you were suspicious all that shit is fictitious i blow kisses mm -hmm. okay thoughts to did anybody's opinion of jeremy change did anybody's opinion of laura change i feel like my opinions from when i originally watched it to re-watching it this morning to then talking it through with jeremy i feel like my opinions have continued to evolve but I ain't promiscuous. And if you were suspicious, all that shit is fictitious. I blow kisses. Um, Michelle says, and they'd be riding down the block just to watch what I got. Mm -mm. Fergalicious. I'm the F to the E, R, G, the I, the E, and can no other lady put it down like me? Fergalicious. So delicious. But I ain't promiscuous. Are we getting a members only tonight? And my opinions haven't really changed. <laughs> So, but what were your opinions going into this, Nessa? And what has not changed? You said not really changed, which means maybe there was a fraction of a change in there. Yes, we will have members only. We're not going to have it later tonight because I actually have a dinner tonight. So I'm going to tape it a little earlier than usual. Let's see what time is it now. Um, I have dinner at 5. So I should probably do this at 3 p.m. So in about a couple hours, we'll just stick around and know that the today's members only will be a little earlier but you'll still get it so that we don't miss a day and then it becomes a thing and then you guys get mad at me and then people are like, your members only is not worth it. Even though I still give you, you know, a good full four to five bonus episodes per month. Um, I will make sure that we get that done and that's a priority numero uno. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to tell you guys about, there's a Vanderpump Rules reality star. <clears throat> Sorry, yeah. There's a reality star on Vanderpump Rules and their publicist wanted to come for me in the DMs. And we had a very interesting exchange and I'm going to let you, well, actually not a Vanderpump Rules star anymore because she didn't come back this season. So there you go. Stay tuned. I'll give you the tea. I'll read you the DMs. We'll get into all of it. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, Michelle or sorry, Mallory says, I think Laura didn't like Jeremy after the Dominican Republic. Yeah, I think he was, you know, I mean, we also, I think I said there, he seemed a little bit more of a frat bro. And I don't think, I think Laura is like very much like, I want a husband. He needs to be this. He needs to be that. Like she has her, her list, right? She's made the list of all the things that she wants in a man. And I don't think Jeremy checked all of those boxes for her. And she was just like, I need to stay committed to this so that I'm not, you know, single at the end of it. Nessa says, I like Sarah and more. I think Jeremy's okay. Didn't handle the situation perfectly, but whoever does, that's a good point. Um, I agree. She was just sticking it out for the show. That's right. Yes, she was. Nessa says, I never liked Laura. 
Oh, Callie says, I thought the same. He turned her off in the Dominican. Yeah, because remember, he was just like, he was in the pool and he was drinking. She's like, I'm ready for bed. And he's like, no, it's it, we're on vacation. Like, let's keep drinking. Let's have fun. Let's have a party. So, yeah. Um, Rocky, Rocky, bang, bang, Rocky, <laughs> Rocky, Rocky, bang, bang. Um, Nessa says, who dare says membership isn't worth it? I don't know. Stacey says he shouldn't have talked with her all night, but he's not that awful. Plus, Laura is a tough partner. I agree. Um, he should not have talked with her all night. And listen, I mean, come on. There there had to have been like a little bit of a flirtation. There had to have just been, there was chemistry there, you know? Uh, there was chemistry there. And he kind of did admit that he's cheated before. I think it was a little more nefarious than he, they're trying to make it out to be. They've probably committed to saying, listen, we're just going to stick to our script. We're not going to be like Raquel and go off script. We're going to stick to the script and we're going to see it through, you know? And I think they did. I think they made it. I don't know if I think they made out necessarily, but I think there may have actually been a kiss. What is it you all dislike about Laura so much? Just curious. Good point, Ellie. Um, or L, sorry. Um, I don't think, I just, I don't think that her and Jeremy were compatible. I don't think that Jeremy and Laura would have made it in the end. Um, I just think they're very different people and they just are not compatible. I think on paper, it may have sounded like that, but like personality wise, communication style wise, I just don't think that they were going to go the distance. So for me, what I dislike is that she really was trying to sell the audience on like, I was committed. I was going to marry him. I loved him when I don't think she really loved him. So for me, I'm just like, no, like you're, you're ignoring all the flags that this was not going to work out. But listen, I've always said, I think I would probably be like Sarah Ann. I would be committed to it. I would be like, red flag. Nope, we're going to bleach it. Throw it back in the wash. Bleach it, bleach it, bleach it until it is white, right? And unfortunately, you're never going to get a red flag and bleach it white. It's never going to get white. You're, it's either going to deteriorate or it's going to be real pink, but it ain't going to be white. Period. End of story. Kelly says, my opinions haven't changed. Jeremy's icky. Sarah Ann was definitely in the wrong. I still like Laura. She was too good for Jeremy. I don't think she was too good. Well, it depends on how you look at it, right? She could, you can possibly say that. Um, I just think different people, different personalities, different wants in life, right? I don't think Sarah Ann was wrong. Well, I mean, she did kind of hang around with the guy that she knew was in a relationship. So I don't love that. So I can kind of see that. But like, I don't think she was wrong. I mean, I know AD really held her to the fire with like the dm and she's like you were dming a guy that didn't choose you make it make sense so i get that but i also think sarah's intentions like were pure like hey if it doesn't work out i'm still an option does that feel like a pick me girl i don't know i mean they had a connection it's weird because you're not in real life circumstances you're in this pressure cooker bubble you're not thinking clearly you can't really talk to other people about this so yeah, Laura dissed Jeremy quite a bit in front of her family. The mom picked up on it. Even her, her sister was kind of just like, what, who cares if he wears a Hawaiian shirt? Like, he likes that. That makes him happy. And if that makes him happy, if that brings him joy, Marie Kondo says, keep what brings you joy. So let him wear his Hawaiian shirts. It brings him joy. And if there's something that your partner loves that brings them joy, then that's a good thing, right? And you shouldn't run from that. You should be like, oh, I may not love it. But at the same time, it's also just like, well, you know, you just got to embrace it because it brings them joy and their joy should make you happy. Hmm. That kind of disrespect was pretty clear. She didn't actually like him. Yeah. Um, I don't like people nitpicking other people. Don't complain about his shirts. If you have a problem with his shirts, you never try to make, you will never make it through actual problems. Yeah, I agree with that. Mallory says, Jeremy is a putz. He's a hot putz. I'm just like, ooh, puts it in me. JK, JK. Um, whatever happened to all is fair in love and war? I mean, yeah, I felt like this. I, if I felt like this was my man, I would rock. I would walk right through you. I mean, I guess. And she she won in the end. Sarah Ann won. Um, her family did explain that. I don't think Jeremy is the type to take jokes like that very well. Tough on his ego. Oh, you think he has a big ego? But does he have a big dick? That is the question. Sarah should have waited until after to reach out. I mean, I don't know. It was after they left the pods. I don't know. 
I'm kind of, I'm not mad at Sarah. I'm not mad at any of them. I do think that Laura did once she found out that like, it wasn't going to work out for her. She did kind of, she was a little impossible. She was a little tough to work with because then she like turned herself into like this perpetual victim. Like he cheated on me, which I don't know. I just felt like she was more embarrassed than she was hurt by him. I think is the reality. I think her ego took a bigger hit than her heart did. That's just me though. Um, Michelle said also when I was talking about his house being unmala, I was talking about how it was serial killer clean with Roomba running patrol. Oh yeah. I, some people did make that, that I forgot that he was like that super clean, neat freak guy. I don't Oh my God. Do you think? No, no. Oh no. Laura didn't like Jeremy. She liked the idea of him. You're supposed to love your partner for who they are. Quirk's not. Exactly, Kelsey. Thank you. I agree with, Ke with Kelsey on that one. All right. Thank you guys for joining. Um, stay tuned. We will have a members only the, today and this afternoon in just a little bit, maybe about two hours from now. We'll do members only, and then I have to get ready because I have to go to dinner. But I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I will talk to you this evening. Um, have a great weekend. If I don't talk to you until then, I am going to try to work on doing a Diddy episode. I don't know if that episode will drop on Friday or if it'll drop on Monday. We shall see, but I will do an, uh, an episode where we get into all of the Diddy of it all because I know we haven't touched on it much on the podcast this week. So stay tuned for that. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please leave me a nice Apple Podcast review letting me know what you are enjoying about the show because I love to read them and maybe I'll give you guys some shout outs. I always forget to, but I promise I will. One of these days, I will definitely give you shout outs. Um, you can follow me at Just Plain Zach all over the internet. Follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach and catch new episodes of No Filter with Zach Peter every Monday through Thursday. We stream it live first thing on YouTube. You can find me at Zach Peter on YouTube, youtube.com slash Just Plain Zach. Uh, you can watch us on Spotify. You can catch my new show, Disaster Daters, which is available. Uh, you can watch exclusively on Spotify right now. It's called Disaster Daters. So go check it out. All right, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll talk to you on Monday if you if I, if I you don't hear from me before then. Okay. Bye.